Hi there, welcome back to the ERS video training series. In this video, we'll cover the creation and editing of web pages. So let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the basic components of a web page. The area at the top with the links, the logo, and the book now button is known as the header, and it populates to every web page. The links on the header are known as the navigation bar. At the bottom of the page, the area in black with the white links and the red social media icon is known as the footer, and it also populates to every web page. The area in the middle of the page between the footer and the header is known as the body of the page. And not all web pages will have it, but web pages that have your categories, that section of the page is known as the store. So let's go ahead and edit our header, and we're going to do that at Admin, Website, Responsive Setup. So let's go down to the Header Options drop-down menu, and I think I'm going to try this one. Anytime we make an edit to our header, we can preview it down here. Now I like the way that looks, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. I was able to set the background image with the black and the rainbow lines on it by following these directions here. So if you'd like to add a navbar background to your header, you can do that as well. Now we can also preview what the store is going to look like on this page, and also the footer. I'm going to go ahead and upload a new store background image. Alright, and then we can go ahead and preview. You can also set a background video instead of an image if you like, and you can also apply tinting here. The tinting can be helpful if you have text directly on the picture. You can also change the style of the icons in your store, but I like the classic boxed images. And we can experiment with different styles of footer as well. I think I like the dark with links and social media. Alright, now I'd like to add my YouTube and Instagram pages to my header and footer. So I'm going to go ahead and go to General Config System Settings. And I'm going to scroll almost all the way down to the bottom to Social Networking. And the instructions for what to enter in these fields is found here. Any of these fields you leave blank will not show up on your header. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and save. And when we go back into Responsive Setup, we should see those icons there. Yep, there they are. Alright, so let's go ahead and edit some content on our home page. We can click here to add custom HTML and CSS code for individual pages, and we can click here to add it for every page. We'll cover the use of custom code further in our advanced web editing video. For now, I'm going to click on the pencil icon, and that's going to bring up an editable version of the page. So generally speaking, in the responsive editor, anytime you see a picture, you can click on it to edit the picture, and anytime you see text, you can click on it to edit the text. This right here is what we call a merge field. Merge fields are used throughout the system to pull data from your folder. For example, this merge field populates the company name to that area on the website. So we can look at our live website and see the company name in there. We'll talk more about merge fields in a subsequent tutorial. So let's go ahead and add a YouTube video to this page. To add a new style section to a page, I'm going to hover over the gear, and I'm going to click on Change Style to access the style section that I'm looking for. I think I'm going to go with this one. And then I'm just going to click and drag it into place. Now as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, well, maybe this would look better underneath the text. So I'm going to grab this little icon here and move it underneath here. Those little blue dotted lines tell me where the section's going to go. All right, that looks a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and click here to edit the YouTube video. And I'm going to go to YouTube. And I'm going to go ahead and go down here to Share and I'm going to copy the link for this video. Then I'm going to go back into the Responsive Editor, and I'm going to highlight just the characters after the last slash, and paste, and then I need to delete everything except for the characters after the last slash. And when I update, yep, there's my video. I'm going to go ahead and update this header text as well, and I'm going to go ahead and update. Great, so then I am going to go ahead and hover over the gear again and click Save. And when we come back to our home page, if we refresh the screen, we see the video now showing up on the page. Now I'm thinking I'd like that video to be a little bit bigger. The easiest way to do it is to go ahead and click on this little pencil. And whichever style section we have in place, it lets us choose a different version of that style section. So I like the side that it's on, but I'd like a larger video. So there we go. Okay, and once again, I'm going to go ahead and save. And then let's go ahead and refresh again. And there we go. And we can also do that with text sections 
if we'd like it left justified instead of centered, and with other kinds of style sections as well. A few things to keep in mind about the responsive editor. Firstly, most images that aren't background images can have what we call an alt tag. The little snippet of text that just came up when I hovered over this picture is the alt tag. The alt tag is a brief description of the contents of the picture. Not only is this important for SEO, because Google and other search engine companies tend to reward websites where the images have alt tags, with better search rankings, but it's also important for handicap accessibility. People with visual impairment use what we call screen reading software. Since they can't see the pictures on the screen, their software reads the alt tag for a description of that picture for them. So when you're working in the responsive editor, anytime you see an image, I encourage you to click into it and see if you see a field like this that says alt. And if you do, I encourage you to put a brief snippet of text describing that picture in there. Now in many cases, these images can also function as clickable links. So again, if you see that link field, feel free to add a link in there. In this case, you can see that I've used the format of what we call a relative link. A relative link is also called an internal link because it navigates to a page that's on the same website. A relative link will not have the full URL of the page that you want to direct people to. It will only contain the parts of the URL that come after the main domain name. So for example, if your website domain is jumpyjumps.com, all we need to put is everything that comes after the jumpyjumps.com, in this case, slash store. External links require the full URL. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and apply those edits. Another thing to keep in mind is that in the responsive editor, you can use HTML and CSS code to create links, to change text colors, formatting, etc. So if you do know a little bit of HTML and or CSS, feel free to use that in here and experiment with that. One thing to keep in mind is that websites look different on a computer versus a tablet versus a phone. So it's always a good idea to keep the website open on your phone and or tablet next to you, and after you make an edit, refresh on those devices so that you can see what it looks like there. Or in a pinch, you can just grab your browser window and shrink it down like this to see what it's going to look like more or less on a phone or a tablet. Alright, now that our homepage looks the way we want it to, I'd like to go ahead and edit this navigation. Right now in our navigation bar, we've got our FAQs page underneath the Info drop-down menu. I'm thinking I'd like to give that FAQs page its own space in the navigation bar, and maybe add an About Us page. So I'm going to click into back into Responsive Setup, and I'm going to go to Website Pages. I'm going to go ahead and click Add New, and I'm going to name this About Us. When choosing a page path for your new page, it's important that the path start with a slash, and any spaces between words have an underscore. We don't need a path alias in this case. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in classic mode for now. We'll change it to responsive in just a minute here. Don't need to worry about content here. We'll edit that in the responsive website editor. I am going to use a template, and I'm not going to bother updating the meta tags right now. Anytime you leave the meta tags of a web page blank, the system will use your default meta tags. And we'll discuss those default meta tags and how to edit them later in this video. We're going to use the default navigation type, so we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and click Submit, and then I can go back into Responsive Setup, and click here to make it a responsive page. And now that it's a responsive page, I'm going to go ahead and build it out the way I want it to look. All right, now that our About Us page looks the way we want it to, I want to go ahead and put it in the navigation bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click into Website, Website Editor. Now anything that we see up here, if there is something underneath it, that means this page right here is a placeholder, meaning that it is going to function as the header for a drop-down menu. So it does need to be an actual web page, but it can go ahead and be a blank page because it's not actually going to render anything. The customer has to actually click on that heading and then choose something from the drop-down menu. And the entries that show up underneath that header are the actual choices for pages that people can go to. Now, as I said earlier, I'd like FAQs to have its own space and not be part of a drop-down menu. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this info from the navigation. I'm not deleting the page from existence, I'm just removing it from the navigation bar. And I'd like to add that About Us page between FAQs and Contact Us on the navigation bar as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go in between them and click on the plus sign. When I click on this drop-down menu, I can choose a page path out from here, and this field here will autofill. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and our menu is now updated. Now if we click on Rentals, we can see that this is a special heading. We can see there's no page path specified, but the special drop-down menu is chosen for categories. 
And what that means is that the system will auto-populate a drop-down menu of your categories at this place in the navigation bar. So let's go back into our live website and click on Refresh. And we can see that the About Us page now shows up in the navigation bar, and the FAQs page has its own space. Alright, now as we've discussed in a previous video, the ERS system auto-creates a page for each category and item as you enter it into the system. The system uses the name, picture, description, setup area, actual size, etc. to populate to the web page. So in this way, much of your website editing and building is actually done for you by the ERS system. But it is possible to edit category and item pages individually as well. So let's discuss how to do that. I'm here in Admin, Products, Items. I've clicked into the 22-foot giant slide, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate about two-thirds of the way down to the page to where it says Display to Customer, and I'm going to click on Edit Responsive Content. Now what this does is it opens up an editable version of the item page, just like in Responsive Setup for our regular web pages. So the interface is the same as our regular Responsive Editor. You hover over here to find the style section you're looking for. You add your style sections and make your edits until it looks like you want it to. And now, just like in the Responsive Editor, we need to go ahead and save our changes. And then we need to go to Website Pages. So we can see that when we clicked to edit the responsive content of the 22-foot giant slide item, the system automatically created a web page in here in this menu. So let's go ahead and click into the item, and then we're going to copy the name of the item that was created by the system. We're going to put a slash, we're going to say items, and then we're going to paste the rest of that, and a slash at the end. Then we are going to make it a responsive page, and we're going to submit. And then when we click on the page here, we should see our updates. And last but not least, let's talk a bit about meta tags. In case you don't know, meta tags consist of HTML title, meta keywords, and meta description. The HTML title is the little snippet of text that shows up next to the favicon in your browser tab. Meta keywords are single words separated by a comma and a space that capture the main keywords that a page is about. And meta description is typically the little snippet of text that shows up beneath the link when you do a Google search. It's worth noting that sometimes search engines will use something other than the meta description to put there, but most often that's going to be the meta description. We can see from this meta description that it's two or three complete sentences that can give people the most basic and general idea of what the web page is about. Meta descriptions should be 160 characters or fewer. The HTML title should be 60 characters or fewer. The HTML title is typically not complete sentences. It's just a very brief description of what that web page is about. So something like Welcome to Our Rental Site, or Inflatable Rentals, Albuquerque, New Mexico, that sort of thing. So you can edit the meta tags for your web pages here in Website Pages. And for your categories and items, you can actually click into the category or item and edit it from in there. Keep in mind, though, that if you don't specify any meta tags for a given page, the system will use the defaults. So it's not like they're going to be blank or anything. So to edit our default meta tags, we're going to go into Admin, General Config, Miscellaneous Settings. We're going to scroll about two-thirds of the way down, and here they are. So feel free to edit these as you see fit. So it's worth putting a bit of time into your meta tags, as they are very important for your SEO. We'll cover SEO more thoroughly in a subsequent tutorial, so I encourage you to look at some of the websites that you admire, particularly websites that you've noticed have really good search rankings. You can check out what they're doing with their meta tags to get ideas. Here at ERS, we offer some limited SEO services, including the SEO Quick Start Setup, where we optimize your meta tags for your top five service areas. So please feel free to reach out to your sales rep about that if you're interested, or you can call the ERS sales line at 505-435-9731, extension 103, or sales at eventrentalsystems.com. And for more involved SEO help, we'll be happy to refer you to some folks we trust. So again, please feel free to reach out to us about that if you like. Remember, anytime you have questions and you're working in the system, you can always click on Help and go to the Knowledge Base and do a keyword search. You can also always reach out to the Tech Support Department at 505-435-9731, extension 102, or support at eventrentalsystems.com. Our next video will cover documents. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.